communities. Next question is in the name of Matthew Penno. Mr Speaker, to the Minister for Trade and Export Growth, what steps has he taken, if any, to maintain New Zealand's policy on free trade despite rising protectionism, security threats and the potential end of the Supreme Court of the World Trade Organisation when it loses a quorum of three judges in December 2019? The Honourable Damien O'Connor. Uh, this government recognises the importance of trade um, for our country. Um, over 85 per cent of what we produce is sold, and that's the way we generate wealth for our country. Um, since the WTO was set up in 1995, there have been two assumptions that we've lived by up until recently, and that is that there would be decreasing barriers to trade, um, and that liberalisation of trade and enabling us to trade goods would in fact improve. The second one was that, of course, we'd have, um, that we would have a rules-based system and that we'd all abide by the rules in a fair and balanced way. Uh, unfortunately, events uh, more recently have, uh, have, have challenged those two assumptions. And so we have embarked upon a six-point strategy um, to move ahead. The first one is uh, to defend the rules-based system to advocate to every country that we connect with and meet with that it's important to have fair rules across trade in the world, that we don't just leave it open to the biggest player having all the say and small countries like New Zealand having no say. The second is embedding New Zealand in the emerging regional economic architecture. And so we've had, uh, of course, we negotiated CPTPP. <clears throat> we had to refocus that whole agreement to get people over the line and to be part of that. Unfortunately, the US stepped back and are not part of it. We are actively engaged in RCEP, which is a regional uh, cooperative economic partnership with over half the world's population. That is the ASEAN countries, uh, with China, with India, with Japan, New Zealand and Australia. And we're currently negotiating an agreement that we hope will reach some uh, fruition by the end of this year. Um, we are advancing flexible and open, no open negotiating approaches. So we're not locked into a position and we're prepared to be very flexible and accommodate um, the, the changing and the different conditions of other countries. Some of them are developing. Some of them uh, need some protection. They don't have the same uh, expertise in e-commerce. And so we have to be flexible as we negotiate them. And then, of course, developing a trade for all agenda. And some of what we've seen in recent times in Europe and in the US is too many people thinking that trade doesn't benefit them. Too many people thinking that trade is just for the companies that do the trade and the benefits don't flow down. Even in New Zealand, we had a lot of people thinking that trade wasn't good for us all. So we've embarked upon a process of explaining how trade does benefit everyone within New Zealand, committing in Europe in particular to an agenda in trade that allows their people to benefit through their whole economy as well, not keeping the benefits uh, for just a few of them. Um, and of course, the, the Last one is intensifying economic diplomacy. And so working with people at a ground level, um, not just working through MFAT, but at every level, um, whether it's negotiations and, and partnerships uh, from agriculture to agriculture and the UE, EU or, or in Thailand, where it enables us to, to build support for the trade agreements from the grassroots up. Uh, George Zangma, uh, Mitchell. Is he confident that he can ensure New Zealand maintains